The Rise of Vinicius Jr. Brazil is a country synonymous with football. There are several iconic moments have been born from Samba football, Joga Benito, and Ginga football. It has also borne several iconic players like the King of Football, Pele, Ronaldinho, and more recently, Neymar Jr. But now, there's a new star on the rise. Over the last two years, Vinicius Jr. has established himself as a star at both Real Madrid and the Brazilian national team, where at times, he has literally been unplayable. In this video, we'll be taking a look at Vinny Jr.'s humble beginnings, his struggles at Real Madrid, and how he overcame them to be one of Europe's most exciting talent. But before we get started, make sure to like this video, smash that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more football-related content. Vinicius Jr. was born and raised in Sao Goncalo, near Rio de Janeiro, with aspirations of one day becoming a famous football player. It was the same for most young boys in that city. Soon after, his footballing path began when his father took him to join Flamengo, where he was initially registered as a left back. Crazy, right? Coming from a humble background, Vinicius had to move in with his uncle in Abolacao to be closer to Flamengo's training facility, the Niño do Urubu, also known as the Vulture's Nest, with the help of the club and some generous entrepreneurs. Between 2007 and 2010, he learned the tricks of the trade at Flamengo's futsal school in Sao Goncalo, located in Niteroi. Futsal is a popular sport in Brazil, and many successful football players, including Zico, Socrates, and Romario, got their start playing futsal. Vinicius was no exception, as he used his learnings to seamlessly maneuver past opponents. And he did it with a smile on his face. His coaches at the Mengao and Fla described him as joyful, talented, and irreverent. The club conceded that he had potential, but encouraged him to come back a year later. However, Vinny Jr. decided he wanted to play football and not futsal, so he never came back. But he did take the Flamengo football test in August 2010, and of course, passed with flying colors. Fast forward to 2017, and Vinicius Jr. announces himself to the world. The Copa Sao Paulo has been a key part of Brazil's football heritage, serving as a launching pad for many of the nation's top players. From Casemiro to Neymar, Lucas Moura and Gabriel Jesus, the competition has helped establish the careers of some of Brazil's best footballers. At just 16 years old, Vinicius Jr. made his mark in the tournament, dazzling opponents who were often three years his senior. He went on to lead Brazil to victory in the South American Under-17 Football Championship, where he was both the top scorer and named the tournament's best player. Nevertheless, it wasn't until May 13, 2017, that Vinicius made his debut for Flamengo as a substitute in a 1-1 draw against Atletico Mineiro in the Brazilian Serie A. Only two days later, he signed a new contract with the club that extended his stay, increased his salary, and included a buyout clause. This contract renewal was part of a EUR 45 million agreement with Real Madrid, who promised to purchase Vinicius in July 2018. On August 10, 2017, Vinicius scored his first professional goal in a Copa Sudamericana match against Palestino and helped Flamengo win 5-0. A week later, he scored his first goals in the Brazilian Serie A during a 2-0 win against Atletico Goianiense. It seemed like a great investment. On Vinicius Jr.'s 18th birthday, he became the second most expensive Brazilian player in history behind Neymar Jr. For a teenager to demand such a huge fee from the Spanish giants, there were not only big expectations but also big shoes to fill, as Cristiano Ronaldo had left for Juventus that same summer. The Brazilian winger was officially presented as a Real Madrid player on July 20, 2018, and was given squad number 28. His debut followed soon after in September playing as a substitute in a goalless draw against Atletico Madrid. Then came his first start on October 31st in a 4-0 victory against Melilla in the Copa del Rey. During the game, he assisted goals for both Marco Asensio and Alvaro Odriozola, and was recognized as man of the match by Marca. It didn't take long for his first goal to follow either as Vinicius scored against Real Valladolid on November 3rd, just 10 minutes after coming on as a substitute in a 2-0 victory. His career was off to a great start as he started to adapt to the Spanish league, scoring four goals in the process. However, his season ended abruptly when he tore a ligament during a loss to Ajax on March 6. He resumed his scoring form in the following 2019-20 season with his first goal in the UEFA Champions League in a 3-1 away win against Club Brugge, then scored his first goal in a 2-0 El Clasico win against Barcelona. 
That season, he made 29 appearances during the league season, where he scored three goals as Los Blancos won the La Liga title. Unfortunately for Vinny, the 2020-21 season was one to forget as he was no longer viewed as a new recruit and was now expected to establish himself on the team's starting 11. These struggles were especially evident during Real Madrid's 2-2 draw against Borussia Mönchengladbach, where Karim Benzema was caught on camera in the tunnel telling Ferlin Mendy not to pass to Vinicius Jr. because he's playing against us. This was despite the fact that Vinny was only an earshot away. Although Vinicius isn't directly referenced, it's clear that the conversation was about him as per Marca, who reported that Mendy only went on to pass to the forward only three times during the rest of the match. Real Madrid's misfortunes weren't limited to Vinicius, however, and the head coach Zinedine Zidane resigned from his post at the end of the 2020-21 season, leaving room for Carlo Ancelotti to return to the Spanish club. Under the Italian head coach, Real began to deploy a unique 1-4-3-3 formation to protect against counterattacks by positioning four offensive players high up the pitch. During this passage of play, the midfielders formed a defensive 1-4-5-1 shape around the halfway line, which increased their unrelenting press on opponents and forced them to engage their wide defenders in playmaking. This created extra space for Real's wingers, like Vinicius Jr., the key elements for Real's offensive success were the speed of transition, the number of support players, and those entering the penalty area. Their progression during an attack involved creating a two-on-one situation by making long runs up the wing and taking advantage of the extra half space left by the full backs. All in all, this recipe has led to Real Madrid scoring goals with impressive efficiency and has greatly benefited the pace and skills of Vinicius Jr. The fruits of this labor were quickly seen at the start of the 2021-22 La Liga season when Vinicius scored the fourth goal in a 4-1 victory over Alaves and later scored two goals as a substitute in a 3-3 draw against Levante, which earned him a regular first-team place over Eden Hazard. He continued his impressive form by scoring twice in a 2-1 win over Elche and his first hat-trick in a 6-0 victory over Levante. This impressive goal-scoring form was continued into the Champions League, and he became integral to the team's cup run. After going 1-0 down to Paris Saint-Germain in the first leg, Vinicius Jr. stepped up by assisting the first goal in Real Madrid's 3-1 victory against the Parisians. He followed this up with an assist in each leg against Chelsea, where Real Madrid won 3-1 in the first leg and lost 3-2 in the second leg, but went through to the semis on aggregate. This was against Manchester City and despite losing the first leg 4-3, he managed to pull one back for Los Blancos, who later went on to win the tie 6-5 on aggregate. His value was most evident, however, when he scored the only goal in the Champions League final against Liverpool, helping Real Madrid win their 14th UEFA Champions League title, and was named the inaugural Champions League Young Player of the Season. And rightly so. He managed the most successful dribbles per 90. 2.4 than any other Real Madrid player, and more chances created, 31, than any other player in the 2021-22 Cup campaign. He also ended the season as a whole with an average of 1.2 goal contributions PE game in all competitions. Despite these personal accolades, Vinny has remained humble and instead heaped the praise on Ancelotti and the impact he has had on his game via ESPN. I talked with him and he gave me a lot of advice to help me become a starter. He gave me a lot of confidence. He was always tough with me when he needed to be. He is like a father to me. As a new era begins to usher in at Real Madrid, Vinicius Jr. is starting to become a model and leader on the pitch for the new crop of players breaking through at the Bernabeu. With Eden Hazard and Karim Benzema reaching the latter stages of their career, and Marco Asensio looking to be moved on by the Spanish giants in the summer, it leaves a hole set to be filled by younger, budding recruits. It additionally gives the opportunity for Vinny to step up and lead the line as the most senior forward. His compatriot Rodrigo and teammate Mariano Diaz are yet to establish themselves in the first team with regular game time, but Vinicius sets an example for them both to follow. Whatever Papa Perez's plan is, the future is looking bright for Real Madrid. Vinicius Jr. is clearly a new star in the world of football rising alongside the likes of Kylian Mbappe and Erling Haaland. He has overcome difficult, challenging moments to establish himself amongst the best in class. At times, it really does feel like there's nothing he can't do, and it's inevitable that he will one day inherit the famed number 7 shirt. 
Do you think he has the ability and aura to wear Real Madrid's heavy shirt? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell to keep up with our Rising Ballers series.